Good morning. Good morning. God bless each and every one of you. Welcome, welcome once again to Kingdom Life Christian Center online virtual church service on today. We are so excited that you are here. Glory be to God. And we are excited that we are here and God has blessed us and graced all of us to once again be in the land of the living. And for that gift, glory be to God. I'm grateful and hope you are as well. Welcome Kingdom Life. Welcome all my partners, my well wishers and supporters. And then to those of you who are here for the very first time, let Pastor Betty extend to you a warm welcome. We want you to know that any time that you want to come back by Kingdom Life Christian Center, whether virtually or in the future in person, we want you to know that you have a warm seat of welcome that is awaiting you. And we will be so glad for you to come and join our house and come and worship the Lord with us. And if you are one of those people who are in the midst of seeking a church home and you've been listening at our broadcast and you've been coming back and you feel led to join the church, don't you delay. Reach out to us at our email, let us know that, and we will give you all the instructions necessary in order for you to become a full-fledged member of Kingdom Life. We have a warm seat of welcome, and we will love, 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 love to have you. So we are excited. Glory be to God. God has graced us one more week. We are here in the land of the living. We are breathing life's air. Glory be to God. And we are experiencing this gift that is called today. Hallelujah. Yes, it is a gift. We thank God because we are still uh, reminiscing on last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. I don't let that get old to me because he is always in my mind, hallelujah, worthy to be praised for the work of Calvary. And we need to start talking a little bit more about the cross and about Calvary. Glory be to God. So thank you for being here and uh, go and let's get ready to go into the service. There is a word of God, hallelujah, in the house today. And the scripture says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. And the spirit is saying something to the church through this prophet's mouth today. Are you ready to go in? Are you ready to hear what he's got to say? And I know he's got something to say to you because if not, you wouldn't have stopped by here because I am a true believer Nothing happened by chance or accident. It is by divine order. What questions have you been asking the Lord this week? What's been puzzling you? What's been uh, uh, discouraging you? What has made you uh, fall by the wayside? Well, if you've got a question, God wants to answer that question for you today. Glory be to God. So go get your paper, get your pencil, get your Bible, and let us get ready to go into this series entitled The Year of the Double Portion. We are just about finished now with this series. We were looking at our papers today and after we can get through, Lord be to God, what we plan to get to through today, then next Sunday will be the culmination of this series. Glory be to God. So you all go get ready and let's go into the service, okay? Amen with the heart and minds ready and uh, to have a love encounter, to praise your God, to give him what's due to him. And if we do so, the Holy Spirit is right here. He's ready. He's willing. He is waiting on us. He's our waiter today. And he is saying, I'm here to give deliverance where deliverance is needed, healing where healing is needed, hope where hope is needed. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to continue as we have promised last Sunday. Uh, prior Sunday because we uh, we put the series on hold for Resurrection Sunday last Sunday. But the Sunday prior, we promised that we would come back and finish up hope. So those of you who has lost hope, the Holy Spirit is here to administer hope to you today. If you're dealing with mental uh, uh, ailments and mental stress, we the Holy Spirit is here. And he he here to. Um, give you peace of mind and give us the mind of Christ. So whatever the need is, I may not list it your thing, but get that list in your in your the forefront of your mind and allow the Holy Spirit, glory to God, to minister to you today. Amen. So let's get ready, people of God. I got so excited and forgot about the opening scripture and prayer. So let us go into prayer. 
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You guys get your heart prepared. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are coming before most holy God. We say, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed would be your name. Thy kingdom come is our prayer and that your will will be done. We are praying for the government of the kingdom of God to come into this earth, to reign, to rule. Hallelujah. So that righteousness can be falling down from the mountains. Glory be to God. And that people would be drawn to you. Father, we thank you for another day that you allow us to see. Glory be to God. Thank you for the breath of life that was breathing to our nostrils on this morning, giving us another opportunity to thank you, to praise you, to magnify you, and to glorify you and to tell of your goodness. Father, we extol you. We lift you up on high, most holy God. Hallelujah. We crown you as majesty. Come and be Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. We give over control of this life that we call ours, and we give it over to you, knowing that we have been bought with the precious price, and that was the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that it pleased you to bruise your son on our behalf, that we are no longer condemned, but we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now we worship the most holy, the most majestic, the most, hallelujah, loving God. God, we thank you that beside you, there is none else. You are El El Yon, Elohim, hallelujah. You are the most high God. You are the creator and the possessors of all things. And without you was not anything made that is made. There is none higher than you, O oh God, in the heavens above, neither in the earth beneath. And we thank Thank you that you are the I am that I am. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, that you're too holy to be named. The ancient of days, hallelujah. We thank you today. Glory be to God, the sovereign one, hallelujah, the one who has no beginning and no end, the omnipotent, the omniscient and omnipresent God. We address you today and we come humbly, hallelujah, before you. And we enter into your gates now in a certain way because we recognize we're coming before the king. And we enter into the gates as you commanded us with thanksgiving. And we enter into your courts with praise. Now, Father, we have come into this virtual place. And all of those who are with me, we have come into this place. And we have gathered in your name to worship you. Now meet us here, Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Uh, Holy Spirit, we ask and we invoke your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Do, hallelujah, the miraculous work today. Hallelujah. That, hallelujah. That goes past our, hallelujah, understanding. Hallelujah, engulf your people in your love, in your grace, and hallelujah, give them the audacity to hope again. Now, Holy Spirit, those who need deliverance, send deliverance, oh God, those who need healing, heal right now. The power of the Holy Spirit is in this place to do all that we needed to be done. Now we say that you are our special guest. Hallelujah. And you said that you will serve us and come and serve and minister to us as you will. Be our helper. Be our standby. Be our go-between. Be our rear guard. Hallelujah. And do what you do well, God. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we know that wherever the people are listening, at me at. I don't know who's all listening. Wherever they may find themselves sitting, standing, listening at this broadcast, meet them right now at every house that is represented here on this broadcast. We speak of blessings of God and we apply the blood to the doorposts of their house. That whatever is missing, hallelujah, will be recovered. Whatever is broken will be repaired in the name of Jesus. And whatever have died will be revived again. And whatever they have lost will be recovered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, I yield now to you as an instrument. Hallelujah. Help me, oh God, to, as I sit down in my flesh, stand up mightily in me, Holy Spirit, 
think through my mind, speak through these lips so that this word of God that is so powerful, that is quick and powerful than any two-edged sword pitching asunder both soul and spirit and, and bone and marrow. That, that, that power that's in the word, hallelujah, that is the, our weapon, oh God, on the battlefield. Let this word of God come forth with the authority that it has within itself through this vehicle of my vocal cords. Speak through my lips and think through my mind and let this word of God come forth unhindered. We declare it will be unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force, but it will go out and accomplish the thing that you please and it will prosper in the thing that you sent it to do. You know what your people been asking for. You know what they've been, that's been ailing them. You know what's been plaguing them and attacking them. And now Holy Spirit, use me and uh, I, I empty out all of me and fill me up with all of you. Hallelujah. And I thank you for it. And I call it done. Hallelujah. Thank you, spirit of the living God that is already falling afresh. I feel your anointing. Glory to God. I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let the, this anointing go over this airway and go into every home, every room, every space. The people are listening. We thank you for calling it done. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I give them all the praise. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Glory be to God. So we're going to turn your attention to the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on to the book of Psalms. And we're going to read chapter uh, Psalms 138. Psalms. 138. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for the truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all your name. That's how important the word is. His, he magnified it above all of his name. In the day when I cry, thou answer me. And strengthen me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst, come on, you are. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Thou shall stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will, listen, write, underline, highlight this. The Lord will perfect that which concern me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not. The work of thy own hands. And the word of the Lord is what? It is blessed. Glory be to God. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. And especially to the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him some praise right here. Come on. Give him some praise. Glory to God. Command your soul to praise the Lord. Say, Pastor Betty, I don't feel like it. Hallelujah. I'm in that place right now. I just, I just don't feel like praising God. I don't have any strength left. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Come on and praise your God. Praise steals the avenger. Hallelujah. If you want something from your father, why don't you give him thanksgiving, praising him for what he has done? And it ain't that bad because you're still here in the land of the living. Amen? Amen. So we are in the series, hallelujah, last week. We stopped the series because we wanted to um, uh, give uh, um, credence to the day of the Resurrect Resurrection Sunday. So we taught on that. So now we are picking back up our series entitled, uh, This is the Year of uh, the Double Portion. And we, we've, I think we're in part, this is part number 14. Oh man, glory be to God. But anyway, we are hoping to probably culminate, culminate this uh, in 
either next Sunday or the Sunday after. We've got a few more uh, segments of this. We're going to end it with a um, double portion declaration. And we hope that you guys come back for that and hear the whole conclusion of the matter. And so we, we ended uh, Sunday before last uh, with hope. We did not finish hope and as promised, we're going to pick up with hope again today. And we do still have quite a bit to go with hope. And we are praying to finish hope today so that we can go right into the next segment on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. And so we were talking about the year of the double portion, such a positive word that the Lord dared me to put before the people of Kingdom Life Christian Center and all of those who follow me. Um, and, uh, and I said, Lord, you know what they've been through in the last two years. And he says, um, yes, this is the reason that they should believe. I am not a God that just good in, in uh, good times. I am the same God that I was yesterday as I am today, that I will be forevermore. The Lord does not uh, diminish in his strength. His promises don't fade away during hard times. Matter of fact, he says in the word of God, when your strength is, uh, his strength is made uh, strong in your weakness. And in uh, these bad times, God show up the best. Glory be to God. And so, he said, yes, put it before the people because they got to understand that I am God. I change not. What my promises says, what my word says will remain true. It doesn't matter the circumstances of the world. It doesn't matter what happens in the world. That I am still the same God and I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they can even ask or think. And he wanted... Those who got an ear, hear what the spirit is saying to the church in this last hour. He's speaking. He's saying a lot of things. Sometimes we surfacely are hearing and then we'll change some things. And by the process of time, things look to get, to get better. People forget all about what just happened. The reason and getting the principle behind what happened learning for what happened and being being better. Go back to the same old ways. As a matter of fact, the world is going back, sometimes look like even further. And the Lord said that they draw nigh to me, I'm going to draw nigh to them. Whosoever make up their mind to draw near and closer to God, he's going to draw closer to you. So he said there, yes, for the believer, they should know that, that their positive confession shouldn't diminish in bad times. Matter of fact, they should be more emphatic about it. They should be more consistent with it during hard times. They should keep on meditating it and musing it, even when the facts and circumstances seems to be going contrary to what's happening in their life. That's when they need to attend to this word even more closely. That's when they need to attend to fasting, praying, and reading of the word of God to build up these faith muscles, to build up our belief muscles, to build up this, what we're going to talk about now, the hope muscle. Glory be to God. These things, people of God, are not automatic. Um, some the God gives us a measure of these things in our life by the person of the Holy Spirit being in our life. But there is levels. That's why we're talking about the double. The children of Israel, the God had promised to give them double for the shame and the reproach that they had went through. It didn't matter whether they went through it because of their own disobedience. It didn't matter whether they went through it uh, 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 justly or not. He says, okay, you done been through enough. Now your time of deliverance is coming. And for all the reproach that you went through, when the enemies hissed at you, when they said, where is their God? When they said God has forsaken them and they still held on, even though for disobedience, they were in captivity, they went through wilderness experiences and the list go on. But yet there was a remnant of people who kept their faith in God. And by them doing so, God always kept his promises to their forefathers and to those who were obedient. He can save people by many or by few. He only needs a hand of obedient people 
who will stand firm in their faith, not wavering with circumstances, not wavering through a, a worldly events, but trusting in the God of their salvation. He says, for everything, my people who I still love, although he, he loves you, don't mean he's satisfied with you. He loved the children of Israel, but he was not satisfied with them. He couldn't be happy with their idol worship. Every time you turn around, God will deliver them, do the miraculous, make water come from the rock, part the Red Sea, then part the joy, make the walls of Jericho fall, and you name all the things he kept doing for them. And yet they were a stiff, hard-headed uh, um, a group of people. And, and even to the point that even in the wilderness after Egypt, uh, some wanted to go back. They brought the Egypt mentality into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That, and I'm saying that, the, that sometimes Christian believers try to bring the world with God and they try to mix the two together and they don't work together. Hallelujah. He says, you got to either love me or and hate the world because I am not a friend of the world and neither are you. And so anyway, and so because of their reproach, though, here's how, there, here is how loving our father is. He says, because of your reproach, I'm going to give you double for what you been through. And the Lord said, that's what I heard for 2022 for Kingdom Life Christian Center. And I said, okay, I dare to put this positive word out there. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to ask for the double because I'm telling you, I don't care what you've been through. We went through loss, we, uh, uh, loss of loved ones, loss of job, racial unrest. Um, we went through a uh, political craziness, uh, and you name it in, in two years. And, and the Lord says, this is the time for the people to believe me as never before that I am a God that can work. Hallelujah. In dry places. I am a God that can make crooked paths straight. I am a God who will not let their feet slip. He, I am a God that will hold them up. They can run to me and run into me and they will be safe. Hallelujah. A thousand may fall at their uh, at their right hand, but it, and uh, and ten thousand at, uh, uh, at their side. I'm sorry, and 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 ten thousand at their right hand, but it would not connive thee. They don't have to be afraid of the terrors that come by night or the arrows that fly by day, because if they abide in me and I in them, then they can hide in the secret place, and I will keep them covered. Glory be to God. So we are uh, going sometimes by faith by the facts that's happening. Yes, the facts are right there staring you in the face. They are real. I'm not a, a, a trying to teach y'all how to be uh, unrealistic. The facts are there. The pain is there. The, the tears uh, that, you, that you cry are real. Hallelujah. That attack on your loved one and on you is real. Glory be to God. What you have lost is real. That is facts. But God is a God that can override facts. He could supernaturally change time for you. Glory be to God. He can restore. You don't believe it? The scripture said, I will restore to you the years that the locust, the palmer worm, and the canker worm, all those little natty gnawing insects that eats up vegetation, that eats up your healthy part. Hallelujah. He says, I can restore what they ate. Glory be to God. So we can't focus on the facts. We got to focus on the truth of the word of God and what the word of God says about us, that we are more than conquerors. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He never seen his righteous seed begging for bread. Glory be to God. He will cause us to triumph and I can continue to list the scriptures. And we just got to hold them in light. We got to see those scriptures, meditate them until they become real and manifest. We got to uh, confess it when we don't feel it. So take the truth overriding with the facts until the manifestation of what you believe in come through. And when you come forth, Hallelujah, out of this, you're going to come forth shining like pure gold. You're going to be better than what you was in, in the in the latter. Glory be to God, and, and God is going to get more glory. Hallelujah. So there is double for your trouble. And because we are living in these crazy times, uh, crazy times calls for uh, other measures. And that means we got to get 
get, get whatever we already possess by being saved and accepting Jesus that that uh that is in the life of the believer those things have to go to another level because we are fighting things and 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 um demonic forces that are intensifying because they sense that the Lord is coming back and their time is running out. So we got to get diligent and we got to ask for some double portions. And we went over a lot of things and I don't have time tonight, today to go over those, go back to all of my 13, 13 parts and you will see, start with part one if you can. Take time to listen at the whole series. But anyway, we could we started off so going back to my point so yes i said lord i hear you i would dare put that out there and whoever will believe will believe so that is a faith word it's something that we got to believe in which leads me strategically right into the segment that we're talking about double portion of hope today hallelujah because we want you to know that hope has to be partnered listen it has to be partnered with faith. It doesn't stand alone. Faith needs hope and hope needs faith. And so what is hope? Hope is the goal setter. The hope is what sets the goal for what it wants faith to do. And so we talked about having the audacity in these crazy messed up times from this moment on to Jesus come. You must have an audacity to hope. Because if you lose your hope, then faith is coming right along with it because they are partners. Because Hebrews what? 11 and 1 says what? Now faith is what? The substance. Hope is not the substance. Faith is the substance. Hope is the goal setter. Hallelujah. And the goal setter of hope makes faith go and target what you're hoping for. Hallelujah. And then it is the substance of what we're hoping for. Faith is. And it's the evidence now of things that we don't see. So if we have, uh, let me let me go so I'm getting ahead of myself. So anyway, so as we talking about hope, glory be to God, what is hope? I'm going to give you the definitions of hope. I gave it last week, but I'm going to give it again. But hope is the feeling that what is wanted what is desired can be had. That means it's got to be in reach. It's got to be possible. And what you're hoping for, most of the of Christian believe what you're hoping for, it's possible. Because why? What you believe in for, you done read it out of the word. Hallelujah. So it's possible. So the hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that the events that you want to happen will turn out in your favor for the best. Also, hope is to look forward to with desire, with desire and with confidence that what you are hoping for is going to come to pass. So as we was talking about hope, so you got to believe it. It's, you got to be, it's got to be hopeful. I'm gonna give you some examples. So here is a principle. So if I say, so let me say, I'm going to give you some principles. Number one, hope without a promise is empty. Hope has to have something promised. So if I'm hoping for something, oh, I hope I get this job. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So you got to have the promise of that uh, to go with it. So go get the promise out of the word of God. And it fuels your hope. Hope is just the goal setter. It is the Tao that you're turning to say what you want. I want to, I need a job. Glory be to God. And so if someone says, I hope this, I hope this will happen. This is empty because there's no promise attached to it. What you hope for has to have some promise of what you're desiring can and that it can and it will come to pass. You have that confidence that it will be based on the fact of you believing in the one who promised it, that it's able to be delivered to you the thing that you're hoping for. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples of, of that in a minute. And so um, let me give you the rest of the principles and I'll come back to that. 
The next principle, hope in the word. You must know the word of God and hide it in your heart, especially, glory be to God, especially for hard, troubling, and trying times such as these we live in. So it says, the word of God had I hid in my heart so that I won't, so that I might not sin against you. Not only do you need to know the word and to meditate the word so that you won't sin, but you also need to know the word so that you can act in a manner to believe what God has said above your circumstances. If you don't know the word, you ain't going to know the promise. And if you don't know the promise, you don't really hope for things because you don't see a promise at the end. You got to see that there is going to be a promise at the end of what you're hoping for. Glory be to God. So the next principle is your hope makes, uh, uh, makes demands by being spoken. Number two, we, uh, I mean, the next one, we already said that hope is a goal setter. So just like, let's use this, just like the, the knob on your stove. It has different degrees that you desire that oven to be at. You got 350, 350, 400, uh, 450, and, you, and, and the continue on. So the, the, that heat setting on that stove is the goal setter. Okay? So the, the, if you turn it on, you got to give it, you got to give the oven a setting for what you for the desired results that you want. So if they tell you baking a cake, you got to bake it on 350. What do you got to do? You got to turn that knob to 350 in order to get what? The desired results. If you do it 250, it may end up doing that slowly, but but you got to put it on. Uh, as a goal setter, you have to set that down of that stove so that whatever temper you temperature, let me slow down, for whatever temper you temperature you set the goal for, it will achieve that and it will work all the way through. So let's uh, talk about hope being a partner to faith because we alluded to that early. So when we talking about that, um, So the unit that, so that stove will work day in and day out and it will produce that 350 degrees, whatever you dialed that knob into, it will never argue with you that I don't want to be here. It is designed that when you set it at a goal to reach 350, that that's what it reached. Matter of fact, they have designed the oven. And if it gets too hard, hot, past that temperature, what do it do? That oven goes off momentarily and it heats back up when it goes below. Why? Because that dial is the goal setter. It is obeying the goal setter. Faith obeys your hope. What you are hoping for. So some of you, because you lost hope, you're not setting any goals. You don't have, you're not giving faith anything to consistently do for you. Hallelujah. Go, glory be to God. Um, have you ever heard the, the, the stove saying no to you? I ain't going that far. So you telling it what to do. <laughs> so it's, so it, um, give me a minute here. We try to read what I'm saying. So if it didn't work that way, then we would be able to say that this, this thing is built, it's not built right. It's got a mind of its own. And therefore, we would never be able to rely on it because we'll never know what it's doing. But it's made to operate consistently time and time again. And if it doesn't, that means that knob has become broken or et cetera, et cetera. Okay? It says it always produced the very thing that you have set the goal for, hallelujah, glory be to God, and whatever it was designed to do. 
And so the spirit is the same way. If you put your hope out there, if you give faith something to do, be consistent, set that goal of what you want to happen in your life today, next week, next month, in this year, and set it like that, then here comes faith because you've already set the goal. You hope for something. Now faith is going to come and be the manifestation and be that substance of what you're hoping for until it comes into fruition. Okay, glory be to God. I hope that makes sense to you. It says, so a seed, um, no one goes as a farmer. The farmer doesn't go out there and plant all, take all that time pull up the land, spread those seeds, and then go and tend to do everything, fertilize it, whatever he needs to do, and don't expect a harvest back. He hopes for a great harvest, doesn't he? To bring to the table. And not only do he hope for it, but then he says, I'm not going to just hope that I get a harvest well, I'm going to put my faith out there. I'm going to set a goal. I'm going to plant so many acres. And I am putting my faith to say that every single uh, row that is of seed that I have sown, that I'm getting full harvest. And he waits and he waits. He looks in expectation, believing without a doubt that this harvest has come to pass. In the process of that time, he starts to see that the rain has been held back. He started to see the scorching of the sun, which starts to show physical proof of sometimes the uh, plant withering. And then if he's not careful, he begins to lose hope that he will have any harvest. Why? Because his mind is on the condition. Now he has started to let the conditions begin to speak and he's changing his thermostat. He's changing his level of what he's believing, the goal setting. Well, maybe I'll get half an acre. And then guess what? That's what you have. But if you keep the, the, the knob, the heat, the goal setter on where God told you to lock it into and lock it in the word of God. And when it starts to seem like it's not coming to pass, go back and get that promise that God told you about that it's going to happen. Glory be to God and keep on talking and to don't talk yourself down out of what you believe in for. If you hope for it, hope for it. Be just like that child that you said, okay, uh, children, we're going to Disneyland. This child been bugging you for years to go to Disneyland. And so now because you have always come through for that child and they have no reason to, you know, they like that. They don't have no reason to, to not believe you. They believe whatever the adults said. And so they said, daddy, mama said, we're going to Disneyland. What do they start doing? They, the goal setter is what they start doing, telling a friend. They start hyping themselves up. They start going, getting pictures of Mickey and Minnie, placing it on their walls and start planning what they're going to be doing when they go to Disneyland. They don't have any proof that yet that they're going, but only just the word. I'm telling you, sometimes we got to get back like babies. And then what happened? Mom and dad, how many more days to it be before we go to Disneyland? So it starts off with a hope. Glory be to God. They have sometimes hoped it for years, but now it came to the point, mom and dad have made decisions we're going to go. But they didn't lose their hope that they would one day go. And now they got the ticket in their hand. They set, kept their goals set, kept reminding the parents. You, we want to go to Disneyland. We want to go to Disneyland. This is what we want. This is what we want. And what happens? Then the mother and father finally gets to the point that they buy that. Now the 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 hope uh, is empty until it's coupled along with a promise. And then what else? They got the word of the parents. And then what seals the deal is they, they they keep on believing. They try to figure out what clothes to pack, what they're going to do. They're excited, 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 asking the mother father, how many more days? But they're planning already for the trip. And then the, it seals the promise when the parents show them the tickets and show them the hotel reservation. Boy, now they know for sure that they're going to, before you know, where are they at? In Disneyland. But they had a goal. They set that goal. They did not lose their faith. Glory be to God. So I hope that helps you to understand that it is a goal setter. You must be um, diligent about it. 
Glory be to God, you must expect it, you must believe it, and you must not lose hope in the face of adversity. You must not lose hope in the face of circumstances and in the face of something else dictating you, trying to distract you from what you believe. Because if we trust the word to be the word, he said, if you ask, I, you will receive. Amen. So faith is the substance of everything that we need to accomplish uh, the goal that we hope for. And it is available at any time that the thermostat or that Tao puts a demand on it. When your faith go and say, okay, now, Lord, I know you promised this now. Okay, now, Lord, when? And you start putting the demand on what you say. Now, sometimes you can get so specific to say, I believe, God, that by this date, that is being coming developed in your faith, that you truly emphatically believe it without any proof. Glory be to God. And you go and you then, you don't see it happening, you go and put a demand on that and set them, uh, uh, and like that knob on that uh, stove, you say, I set you to 350, I expect you to cook at 350. And I'm saying, I put my faith out there for for, for my child's healing, for my child's salvation, for my marriage, for my job, for my ministry, and whatever your name is, for the health of my body, I put my faith out there and I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm not going to turn the dial down by what I'm seeing on, on, uh, on the news, not what I'm hearing from other people's report, I would dare believe the report of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I talk about the year of the double. We got to get a double shot, a double. I tell you, God, give us a, a, a an injection of hope. Glory be to God. An injection of this thing so that we can believe it. Give us a double of what we already have. Hallelujah. So we can per start performing the stuff that the Lord said we're supposed to have. Hallelujah. So anyway. So your goal setter, which is your hope, is the thing that determines whether it is um, going to happen or not. Okay? And so let's continue to go on. So now as we go on, uh, we talked last week about hope deferred. I'm only going to give you all the scriptures for these, Proverbs 13 to 12. Hope deferred or means hope that is delayed, hope that you put off. Hope that you postpone. Hope that you prolong. Say, I'll hope for that later. But right now, it don't look like that's happening. It says it makes the heart sick. Keep on doing that. Keep putting your hope off. Based on because if you keep doing that, you could be for sure you are you are guaranteed that something's gonna come that's gonna make you prolong and put off hope again. Because you're gonna say, if once I get that job and get this and do this and do that, then then I'll. I believe, nope, then something, you get that, then something else happened. No, nope, you've got to set that, that, uh, that gauge and that goal setter, and you got to leave it right there, trusting and believing God for it to come back. I didn't say it was easy. Y'all, I keep telling y'all the time, what well, Pastor Petty telling y'all, I ain't telling y'all the way I'm preaching it, like it's just like, oh, you just going to pop in there. No, it takes work. But everything is worth some takes work. So we, we got to do some things, you all. Hallelujah. We think, think God is some genie in the, in the bottle. A lot of things, his promises are unilateral. We don't have to do nothing just by heritage, just by us being his child. They are ours. But then there's other things. You got to be a participant in the thing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ain't going to just fall in your lap. Faith without works is dead being alone. You can Oh, keep on talking about faith. I received my job. And you ain't look look for one. You ain't sending no resume. You ain't sharpening your skills and you sitting in the bed and, and doing whatever you want to do all day long. And you think God's just going to drop a job in your lap. Your faith and what you're hoping for is a goal setter. Can you go out there and you do something? Faith of... Uh, uh, Without the words is dead being alone. They got to be together. You hear what I'm saying? So hope is partnered with faith. And then faith got to have words. Amen. So then we said that Romans chapter 4, 18, we talked about Abraham. Abraham, who against hope, believe in hope, when he was past childbearing years, when his wife was past childbearing years, and when she had no kids, 
But God said, you're going to have a son. And then Isaac shall you by Sarah. And then Isaac shall your seed be called. Glory be to God. And he says, who against hope? He just still believed in hope. Against all the odds. Against the natural reasoning and logic that people say, logically speaking, y'all know he's past the age. But with God, what? Come on, somebody. All things are what? Possible to them that believe. Then we talked about Romans chapter five, verses three through five. Hope, make not a shame. If you hope in God, he won't make you ashamed. And this is where we fall apart a lot of people because they say, if I hope for that, and if I tell people what I'm hoping and believing and have faith for it, which they already believe that we fanatical with this faith thing. Then I said, if I put myself out there and it doesn't, and this is what we said, and the devil said, and if it doesn't come to pass, they're going to, that going to look funny. How are you going to explain that to them? And that going to look like you lied. Listen, y'all. Hope, the scripture says, don't make a shame. And, it's, and it reads like this in Amplify. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us ex exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardships, come on, y'all. See, the word tells me, Produce patient and unswerving endurance. And endurance or fortitude develops maturity of a character, approved faith, and tried integrity. Character of this sort produces the habit of joyful <clears throat> and confident hope of eternal salvation. Verse 5, such hope, this is what I'm saying, hope make not a shame. Such hope, this type of hope, Never disappoint or delude or shame us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And the Holy Spirit is our witness that the Lord, if he said it, you can bank on it and he will not let us be ashamed. They that put their trust in the Lord, Psalms, I think 125 and 1, he will never let be ashamed. He will not let you go out there. Hallelujah. Glory be to God if you believe it to be so. Then Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Ephesians 1 and 18. I think that's where we stopped off at. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 18. Let me get there. Hallelujah. Do you feel a little a shot of injection of hope coming to you? Have you lost your hope? And you said, Pastor Betty, man, you you right on it. How did you know? I didn't. The spirit of the Lord did. Hallelujah. Because he, that's all we, you know, if we lose our hope, what else do we get? Lose hope and faith because I told you those two go together. What else do we got? You sit here, people all the time that goes through horrific things that are Christian believers that trust in their God and don't renege on him at the first sign of trouble. And, and accuse him of not loving them, et cetera, et cetera. You hear them on talk show hosts and people be wondering how I saw one time a lady lost her whole family, six kids all at one time. How do you deal with that? And uh, you know what the, the most common answer? They say, it was only my faith that's keeping me sane, keeping me alive. Only faith that that is not the end, that I don't see it all. I don't understand it all, but I don't see it all. But I trust God, my God that I serve. And it's only my faith that got me this far that I'll continue to even live, that grief don't, don't uh, uh, consume me. Sorrow don't consume my heart. And I can keep on going on and running for the Lord. I'm telling you, who wouldn't serve a God like we serve? I'm, I'm, I am employing some of you who are struggling with life. I know whoever that is is about to throw in the towel, give up on life, put that bottle of pills down, put those, those crazy thoughts away. I'm not saying you crazy. I'm saying those are crazy thoughts. If you were supposed to be going away from here, God would have God called you home by now. Don't let the devil make life so hard for you. And if you are not saved, you don't know how to get the help. And Pastor Betty here said, help is available through Jesus Christ. Give him your life. I know this is not the end invocation, but I'm going to 
as the Holy Spirit is leading, give him your life right now. Put your hands in the hand of man, hallelujah, that is able, hallelujah, to, to help you, to pull you up out of that muck and that miry, that quicksand of life, just to see and out of that water that you feel like you are drowning in life's uh, ocean. Hallelujah, with no help around. There is help. I'm throwing out the lifeline. Why don't you not stop drip, drifting away? Reach your hand out. Grab a hold to the lifeline. And then that lifeline is Jesus Christ. He wants to bring you home. The devil want to kill you before you get it right with the Lord and before you fulfill your God-ordained purpose. Because he put you here for a reason. You didn't just get here because your mom and daddy decided to get together. You existed in the heavenly realms before they did that. God know you before you were formed. He brought you here to this earth realm. Glory be to God. And he has a purpose and a plan for you. Hallelujah. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Hallelujah. If you need help, go get the help. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the help. After all they say to you, you're still going to have to look to Jesus to sustain you. He's the only one that could sustain you and get you through these crazy times. Hallelujah. I don't know who that was for, but it was for somebody. Uh, you, you have lost all hope. Hallelujah. But the hope giver is here today to set you free. Some of you are so angry with life because situation is just making you heated. Every single day you get up, you're angry about something and it's consuming your life. You can't even live anymore because you're so angry. You can't control other people. You can't control how crazy they act. The only person you can control is you. And the only anger, all that anger build up in you and all of that is only uh, uh, affecting you and your stress level and your health. And the more that you stress about it, the more angry you are, are at them. They're living life and care less about what you're dealing with. And they will keep on acting up because they know the button to push. Hallelujah. God told you that be, you can be delivered from that anger. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Get purposefully minded driven. Uh, see how important you are to, to yourself and to those God has put around you. See your value. See that you've got purpose and you've got a whole life ahead of you to live. That don't let anger. God said anger rests in the bosom of fools. He, he allow us to get angry. Yes, he do. Pastor Betty get angry at some stuff. I'm angry at some injustice in the world today like that. But we got to put a check on that anger. Glory be to God. He said, be angry, but don't you sin like Peter. Did. <laughs> Peter was so angry and, uh, and he, he was calling stuff doing a good deed. Like saving the Lord, think he needed to save the Lord when they came to get him out of the garden of Gethsemane. And they said, that's Jesus of uh, Judas betrayed him with a kiss. And then the soldiers took a hold of Jesus and, and Peter was like, I ain't having it. See, Peter had an anger problem. <laughs> he always was loud. He always was uh, um, speaking up, hallelujah, loud and wrong. But the Lord didn't turn him away because God was knowing he was working on him. But 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 that same Peter, if you see him over in Acts, he won the same one. That's why he got delivered from the anger. He channeled it. He channeled that anger to where it's belonged, angry against the enemy and what he was doing until he became productive. Your greatest uh, uh, your greatest uh, what do I want to say? Revenge, if I will, without a lack of another word. But your greatest thing against your enemies is to be a success. Don't let them keep pushing that burden button and taking you there. It, because if you do, you know why? Because they want people to see you as an angry person, hard to get along, to prove their point. Don't do it. Get delivered from that. It's not helping you and it's not helping anybody that's around you. And to the point before you know it, it's consuming your life. And then it's, it's, it's making everybody else's life around you uncomfortable. You better than that. You're more than the sum of your anger. Channel that anger to something positive. Glory be to God. You forgive people because not because they deserve to be forgiven, but you forgive them so that you can be free because it binds you up. Glory be to God. I've seen people who walk around their whole lifetime not liking somebody and that person care less or even have a thought about them. Go on and even when they see them, it, it makes them more angry. And I'm saying, and then they go on about their life, living their life happy. And years later, you got stress, 
a stress-filled life. Uh, body has got certain ailments cause of stress. Some of you just need to get rid of that stress. And the Bible, I don't know why I'm here right now, but the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you know why I'm going to finish it in a minute. But the, the, the Bible said that uh, laughter, it do a good like a medicine. Some of you, all you need to do, if you release that anger and laugh a little bit, you'll find yourself a little bit more happy. Get around joyful people. Get around, if you're dealing with that situation, then find yourself in that day counteracting that with something positive. Hallelujah, glory be to God. But let me go now. We are in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 18. We're still talking about hope. Yes, my hope for you is that, that you will get up out of that, huh, glory be to God, and, and get into some, some um, get into serenity and some peacefulness, steal away, get some me time somewhere. Uh, if you got to ask somebody to babysit, if you got to ask some, get a couple of days. You know, even the world has uh, uh, understood it on our jobs. They understood that throughout an eight-hour day, they got to go to lunch. They got to have a reprieve. They got to have a break to, to get a release from the stress of this job so they could come back refreshed. They understand the importance of vacation. Take vacation, you all. I'm talking to somebody who didn't for a while, and now I regret it. I should have taken every day when I, I needed to take it. But I'm saying uh, you take that vacation because what you can't hardly do when you're about to leave that job prematurely, glory be to God, all you need is to get away from it for a while. Uh, get away from all of the anxieties of it and the stress of it. And then you go on vacation, go to your beautiful tropical place. If you ain't got the money to go out of town, you don't need to go out of town to go on vacation. Have a stay vacation. Holy Spirit, where I'm going here? Glory be to God. Get a stay vacation and, and, and just be you. Uh, uh, ask somebody uh, uh, to come in and sit the dog and babysit the cats. I need that right now, my dog. But anyway, we'll do whatever you need to do to get you some me time, a long time, and watch to see how you're going to come back and refresh because you come back when you're not stressed, when you're not that angry, you have a refreshed, renewed mind to even look at things different. It don't even bother you. And as a Christian believer, uh, vacation too, but just if you get, get so angry and you find anger can continue to be following you, it's time for you to start fast, fast and see one that anger, you don't even have the strength and the anger to, to, to be, I mean, the strength and the energy enough to be contending with people. And then you'll find that after you go through a couple of days fasts or whatever like that, you'll come back with a whole new, uh, um, a whole new angle and you'll be able to deal with their foolishness for a lot, while, <laughs> at least for a while until you got to go fast again. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you got to do this, people of God. Amen. So let's go now. I'm going to be winding it up in a minute. Ephesians chapter number one. And I said verse number 18. And it reads like this. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know what is the hope. You see that, that word hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saint. And this is what I pray on a consistent basis for people that's on my prayer list and for uh, uh, the saints of God. Lord, would you please keep our eyes open? Let the eyes, of, excuse me, of our understanding be enlightened so that we can understand what our hope, the hope of our calling is. What is that assurance? What is that that we have uh, that we know that can be a, a, attained? What is the feeling that what we want and, and the events that we want to happen can uh, happen in our lives so that we may know what the hope of our calling, what hope is in the calling that you call the believers to. And so um, give me a minute. So we are asking God to give us that spiritual eyesight and to give us that wisdom and the insight to know more of him so that we will make, be able to have that inner, that inner, um, what I mean, confirmation, that 
inner illumination uh, of that spirit, which would make us realize how great the hope is in the thing that he has called us to, what that magnificence is, what splendor of the inheritance that God has promised to all Christian believers and how tremendous that power is available to all of those people who dare to believe in God. Hallelujah. So that the center, my prayer is that the your heart and your eyes of your eyes have hearts and the eyes and the core existence of who you are and your being would be flooded with light, would be enlightened by the Holy Spirit so that you would know and cherish the hope, that divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you to, the riches of his glory and the inheritance in the saints, which is God's people. So you see the importance of that hope. Know what the hope of the calling is. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And so let's turn to Hebrews chapter six, Hebrews six, Hebrews six. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter number six, verse 11. Hallelujah. Hebrew six and 11. I think we'll start at verse number uh, 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and you do minister. Verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope. See that word uh, of hope unto the end. That you be not slowful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See that? Who through faith and patience do what? You inherit the promise. But when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by whom himself. Verse 14 saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, what? After he patiently endured, Again, after he patiently endured, he did what? Obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath, verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have, come on somebody, have what? A strong consolation. In other words, that we may have what? Strong hope who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. You see that? Hope, which is the anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. What is all of that saying, Pastor Betty? You lost me. Here's what it's saying. It started off by talking about how men, uh, they... <clears throat> how they do when they make a promise, meaning that a guy, when he made a promise to Abraham, he could swear by nothing greater. How can I make this sure that I, my word is my word? So he swore by his own self, nothing is greater. And so he said, he said, then this is the promise that he gave him. I'm promising you, Abraham, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. You obey me. You got up. You left your kindred. You obey me when I told you to sacrifice Isaac, and it was accounted unto you for righteousness. 
And now you have been changed from a father of a multitude to a father of nations. And he says, because I'm going to bless you, look up, go back into Genesis, read the, the accounts of what God said he was going to do for him. Look up as far as your eye can see, I've given unto you. He gave Abraham gold, silver, cattle, and you name it, land. And he says, as far as you can see. And he says, now in blessing, I'm going to bless you. Even in those scriptures, he said, whosoever bless you, I'm going to bless them. Whosoever curse you, I'm going to curse them. And so God may, you know, how when somebody promise you some, somebody Usually you want to say, how do I know you're going to come through? And they give you a token to show you that they're serious about their promise. They say here, um, you know, so back in the day, they used to give IOUs. And that was a note saying, I promise that I owe you this and I'm going to pay you back. Well, we know what happens today. But anyway, just walk with me through it, how it's supposed to work. So usually when make, man make a promise, they have an oath that shows that they're sincere about their promise to secure the deal. Usually, uh, uh, formally, in the form now, we do that when you're very serious about something like ownership of land, buying a car, buying some big capital items like that. The promise for one to come through on what they said, you enter into a contract, okay? And that contract is considered the oath between both the parties. But God says, I'm entering now, Abraham, into a contract with you. And I'm not swearing by anybody else's conditions, but I'm swearing by myself that this is going to happen. So he says, and in verse 15 said, and so after he received it, all that he did, he hoped for it. He set it as a goal setter. And then he had belief and faith in what God has said. And all that was left to do was to do what? patiently. He patiently, verse 15 said, endure. That means he patiently realized and obtained it, having waited long and endured patiently for the promise of a birth of his son. Not the son by your handmaiden, but the son that I promise you that in Isaac shall all see be blessed. And so after enduring a long time, waiting patiently for it, what did he do? He received what he hoped for and he received what he patiently waited for. People of God, what is the devil telling you? You've been waiting a long time. The Lord's forgotten about you. Matter of fact, God ain't going to give you that. He blesses others. He's not going to bless you like that. Why are you still trusting in God? Don't you listen to it? Don't you hear? Tell the devil that your timetable is not God's timetable thousand years is as one day and he is may seems like he's delayed but he has not denied if you know that that was a, a a promise given of god if you have found it in the word that's why i say uh hope has to be attached to a promise we don't know the promises because we don't read the manuscript to, to find out what he promised us so therefore with, for the lack of knowledge of you knowing what's yours you don't get it my people perish for the lack of knowledge. But after he received God's promise, he patiently waited for and obtained. Then he goes on to say, men, he given an example now how men swear by the greater and the over confirmation to them is the end of strife. In other words, they said the reason that we're confirming this, the reason we enter into the contract reason we're going to have this signed document so we won't have no disagreements. There won't be no strife. It will be the final finale of and the coming of the agreement to any third party that may look on that this was our intentions. So that's why you're supposed to read the fine lines because once you sign it, you have agreed to that. And so this is how they do it. They say, what to end the strife? But then it says, so if man has this this um, this understanding, verse 17, wherein God willing, willing more abundantly to show unto them, isn't he more willing and to show unto the heirs us of promise, the Im immutability of his counsel? What do that immutability mean? The unchangeableness of his, his promises. If he said it, he believed it, 
uh, if he said, I believe it, that settled it. He is not fickle and moody. He doesn't change now. That, oh, God mad with me. You know how people say, I promise you that, but that was when we was on good terms. And sometimes they don't come through and they promise God is not like that. He want to us to, he want to abundantly in a large way to show us that if he promised us something, glory be to God, he means it, glory be to God. He is not a man of, of empty and vain words and don't come through on his promises. So God uh, wants to convince him the, and go beyond a doubt to show us that those who would inherit the promise of his unchangeable word, um, is, uh, that's what immutability means, of his counsel or meaning of his purpose and his plan, confirmed it by an oath, that by two, in, this is the oath that he put up, this is what the collateral he put up, that by two immutable things, that means two unchangeable things in which it is, come on, y'all, I'm about to get at it. it is, it was impossible, it can't even happen, it's impossible for God to lie, that we may have what kind of consolation, come on, y'all, read it with me, that we may have a strong a strong, come on, tell a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold so we can lay hold upon the hope. Y'all, come on, see that? Upon the hope that is set before us. Verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That's why some of your souls seem like you, it's just all over the board everywhere. In your soulish realm, your emotions is on the roller coaster ride. Your intellect is going crazy. One minute you think you know, then you don't know. Uh, your will, I'm saying, it anchors your soul. It, it makes it stay quiet, bringing it into alignment with the word of God, both sure and steadfast, and which enter in that within the veil. Hallelujah. So it is impossible for God to lie he will keep his promise. He set an oath to it. Hallelujah. It is, he will, he will never prove to be false. He will never prove to have deception, deceptional, uh, deceptive met, uh, methods and, and things that he do to try to fool you uh, into this, uh, into a contract or an agreement <clears throat> that we may have this strong encouragement and grab a hold and grab fast to this hope that is appointed to us and set before us. Hallelujah, glory be to God. So I'm about to wind this up in a few minutes, people of God. Um, so we must keep hope alive, y'all. <laughs> so the last scripture I'm gonna take you all to is Second Peter, talking about this is the year of the double. We got to get these things increased in our lives. Second Peter 1 tells us that, let's go there. Second Peter chapter 1, Verses three through nine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel somebody hope being reinstated. Glory be to God. Feel somebody who didn't have hope grabbing a hold to hope. Come on, somebody. You see how important it is? See, we talk about faith a lot, but we got to bring hope back into it because I told you they're partners. They don't exist without the other. It starts off with a hope, but then it ends up with you but uh, having faith for what you're hoping for. Come on. Hallelujah. What did I tell you all to go, Second Peter? Hallelujah. Let me see where I tell you all to go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we, we, we finished talking with hope. So I want to take you to, the, uh, uh, to this next scripture when we are talking about receiving the double portion to show you how we're supposed to be increasing. Glory be to God. So we turn to 2 Peter chapter number one. We're in the wind down. Glory to God. And we're going to start at verse number three. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I want y'all to know that I, I think I quote that quite often is that God gives us everything that is, is pertaining to life and godliness and everything that is needed in regarding to an answer to every issue of life is in the word of God. So what is he saying is that uh, he has given unto us 
all things that is suited uh, to uh, and and a requisite to life and godliness, and then says through knowledge of Him who called us by and for His own glory and for His and for excellence. And then verse four said, "Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises." You see that that by these you might be partakers. You may partake. In the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. When we were born again, we became partakers of his divine nature. Hallelujah. Therefore, we have escaped. We have escaped from moral decay, from corruption, from evilness, from rottenness that is in the world because of covetousness, which is lust and greed, and we have become sharers in the, the divine nature. Verse number five, and besides this, so here we go, we're talking about receiving double. Besides this, that we just said, giving all diligence to these divine promises, it says, add to your faith what virtue. So you see, we we are talking, remember we said, you're not going to hear me say double all the time. When we talk about double, we talk about increase in extent, in scope, et cetera. So now we are encouraging you to grow and to act too, according to the scripture. And let me get up. I want to give you all some definitions of these words. Glory to God. Give me a minute here. Hallelujah. So it says, besides this, giving all diligence, what is diligence? It, diligence is attention, alertness, care. It is earnestness, intensity. It is a, a vigor and application and intent. So to besides this, give this attention, give this alertness and this earnesty and add to your faith virtue. What is faith? We already just talked about that. Faith is confidence, trust, belief that is not based on proof. It is trust in the scriptures and his promises that it will come to pass exactly like, like he said. So in other words, he says, give diligence to these. All these I'm about to list, give due diligence and care and attention and intent to. Number one, add, meaning double, you add to your faith virtue. So add to what you believe. Add to your confidence, add to your trust, add to your belief without being based on true virtue. What is virtue? Virtue. Virtue. Virtue is moral excellence. It is goodness. It is righteousness. So you see all of these just by itself is not enough. And I'm asking uh, for the, the portion size that is conducive to begin to make manifest through this anointed vessel signs, wonders, and miracles so that the demonstration of the spirit will follow a word preach. We got lots of good preach word. I'm ready to see the demonstration of the spirit happening in the lives of the hearers. I don't want you all just listening at sermons. Just going year in and year out to conferences, workshops, seminars, and you name it. And we coming out no different. It is a short-lived, give it a week and we forget. And we right back in the same old places, asking for the same old things, doing things the same old way, still got the same old nasty disposition and attitude, still doing things that are contrary to virtue, which is more excellence, goodness, and righteousness. They're teaching you that this is not possible. Ain't nobody perfect. That's what we stop all these cliche because you're using the that some of these things are true, but with the motive that people are saying, it's a scapegoat for them to continue to act up and not come up to the level and get increased 
in the portion size that they may have a little of this in operation in their life. God don't want just a little bit. He wants more than enough so that we can do exploits in this last hour. Glory be to God. So add to your faith virtue. See, we get one thing, we get stuck on it, we get stuck on it. We teach, 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 preach, preach, preach it. Uh, confess it, confess it, confess it, share it, share it, share it. And we don't see that that is not the full gospel. That is not all to it. We got to add to the faith. So you got great faith, but you ain't got none of the rest of them. You are incomplete. And if you got the rest and don't have faith, incomplete. You got faith and got hope, you incomplete. You, you see what I'm saying? We got to add to this thing. We got to get the double portion, glory be to God, operate in our lives, you all more on a consistent basis. It should be more a rule than an exception. Hallelujah. So anyway, add to your faith, virtue. Virtue is more excellence, goodness, righteousness, conforming, conformity. You see what it means of one's life and conduct to moral and ethical principles. This is the, the secular dictionary saying this. Now, come on, y'all. Y'all know what the word says. It is... Um, effective force or power or potency. And that's what we need. Glory be to God. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of element. All this praying that we everybody say they're doing. All of this praying we say we're doing. I'm not saying nobody is not doing it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Take it in balance. But I'm saying on an overall basis, why isn't things different? And all this prayer that we say we're doing, most of the time we're praying fervently. We're spending the time. We're diligent about how many hours we're doing. We're diligent about meeting together and over the amount of days and groups praying us together. But we are praying fervently, but are we praying effective, effectually? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Anyway, let's continue to go on. And then he says, and then add to your virtual knowledge. And then what is knowledge? We all know kind of what knowledge is, but I'm going to give you definition of knowledge is acquaintance with facts truths or principles as from study come on listen at this as from study or investigation of a uh, general information knowledge about many things some people know a little bit about a lot of things and some people know uh, a lot about one thing you need to know a, a, a whole little bit about whole lot of things and certain areas you need to know uh, much about that. Amen. And so knowledge is also uh, of being acquaintance or familiar uh, gain that you gain by sight experience or by uh, a, a report or by knowledge of a human nature. It is awareness as of facts or circumstances. It is something that is or may be known. It's information. It's sought out, out knowledge. Okay? It is the sum of what you know. That's knowledge. So add to your faith virtue. So add to your belief, your conviction, and your confidence, and your belief, and your alertness. Add that to faith. Um, and then add that to virtue. Virtue, your more excellent goodness, righteousness, uprightness, and moral excellence and conformity uh, and conduct of moral and ethical principles. Add to that the knowledge that we just said, the sum of what you know, getting those facts and those information, coming, becoming acquainted, acquainted with facts, truths, and principles as from the study and the investigation. Sometimes we study, we got to investigate some things. Stop believing everything. Stop investigating some of the things that you hear then add to uh your knowledge temperance see it keeps going on so not only that but we got to add temperance what is temperance it is simply meaning self-control oh lord when i got to that i said lord a lot of us need help a lot of us we especially in this day everybody is like they're ticking time bomb. everybody almost out of control Roll rage at all time high. People standing in line, can't stand in line and wait. People say something to them, can't even say too much to people. Now, sometimes can't even say hello. What? Think you got a bad motive. Just out of control. Just totally out of control. 
add to that, uh, and then also temperance means moderation or self-restraint in your actions. It means habitual. You see this habitual uh, moderation. Okay. Then add to, we're not done. Add to temperance, then what? Patience. Woo. You see, those of y'all talking about you bored in the Lord, this is enough to keep you busy. <laughs> oh, I know I may be seeming a little facetious and funny, but I'm serious. If you're getting a little bored, come back to this list. Come on. Ask them for the double in it. Hallelujah. And we need a, a lot of double of what I'm about to say here. But we just finished talking about uh, this patient and how it played a part. And it says patience. And add to your temperance patience. So you can have self-control, but then don't have no patience. So uh, patience is the ability or the willingness to suppress restlessness. I, I need to say that again. Uh, it is an ability or willingness, willingness to suppress restlessness or annoyance. Y'all, <laughs> annoyance with, when confronted with delay. I see the grocery store. Excuse me. Who about to speak? <laughs> Excuse me. Patience. The Bible saying in your patience possess you yourself. We need some patience. Come on. All of us need to say out, Lord, help us with our patience. Give us long suffering, Lord. So, because he told us to add to it. It is, um, it says it is bearing along with annoyance, misfortune, delay, hardships, pain, etc. With fortitude and calm, being calm and without complaint, anger, or the like. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Hallelujah. So add to that patience. Some of you, you, you get annoyed when God don't answer you when you want to. And that's why you lose patience and you go out on your own. And then when you make a shipwreck, you want to bring that, that shipwreck right back into God's lap. And he already told you what to do, but you was impatient. And you didn't want to wait. And you went into your own intellect and your own ways and knowledge. And you made a mess. Now you want God to fix it back up. And guess what? He's merciful. And sometimes he will. But sometimes those actions have consequences. I'm just saying. And then add to your patient what? Godliness. Oh, Lord, this list is long. I know y'all said, so Pastor Betty, when are you going to finish? I am going to finish when the word's finished. And add to patient godliness. And what is that godliness? Godliness is the ability or practice of conforming to the laws and the wishes of God, being devout and having more and having moral uprightness. And so add to that godliness. Amen. And then, and then it says, and then verse eight, and no, I'm sorry, seven, and to godliness, here we go, another one. Brotherly kindness. <laughs> what is kindness? Affection, benevolence, uh, being cordial, courtesy, forbearance, gentleness, goodness, graciousness, hosp having hospitality, uh, just uh, uh, hum humanity, uh, patience, uh, sympathy, tenderness, and tolerance. That's what we're supposed to be having for one another as, as brotherly love. Glory be to God. See, the Christian believers, we're supposed to understand the family of God and being brothers and sisters more than the world know. And I'm telling you that there are Christian believers. I used to didn't believe this. I used to hear the pastor say this. That's because he was throwing off on our family because we were so close. But he said, all this kinfolk salvation, you could have a, 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 a Christian believer who could be closer to you than your blood relatives. And I used to argue with that. I'm like, he just trying to say he don't want us to be close like that. But anyway, I found out that yes, you can have a Christian blood uh, brother in Christ Jesus, and they will appear to you just as close or closer than a biological brother or sister. But he says, 
So I want you to consider each other with this brotherly love uh, um, because I can have godliness but don't have brotherly love. He wants us all. The, what I'm trying to get out, you all, is talking about getting this dough, increasing in these things. We got to add to this, 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 this to that, this to that, this to that, to be whole and complete and to be operating like the Lord wants us to operate. And it is not beyond our reach because if it was, he wouldn't ask us to do it. If it was impossible for us to do it, he would never have commanded it for us to do it. So he, we know that it's possible to do this. Like I say again, it takes work. It says, and then to uh, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, then it says charity. And then charity, we know sometimes they use charity as another word for love. So charity is, in, in, in Christian dumb, it is agape, mean Christian love, unconditional love. Now some people, woo, you got to love them because God says so. It's the unconditional love. Because some people almost, I said sometimes, I said, Lord, they almost unlovable. But we got to love them anyway. Love them to life, y'all. Love them to life. Don't go where they are. Everybody can go there. It don't take strength for you to jump on that bandwagon. It takes strength for you to do what the word says do. Even when they maliciously and facetiously is doing things. And, and, and are hard to do. Now, sometimes we can love them, but we may not be able to live peaceably with them. He says, as much as is within you, live peacefully with all men. Because he knew there's going to be some people that just going to be like that. And you're not going to be able to live peaceably with everyone. But we got to love everyone. You understand that? And so there, so charity, he said, and then add to all this at the end, he left love. We can't do nothing about without love. Charity also don't mean just love, but charitable in nature, which means to result in giving of help, money, and food to those who are in need. See, this is what agape is. Even though they do you wrong, even though uh, they don't treat you right, and they hard to get along with, agape love, unconditional love. If you find them in these situations, it will reach out to them. Because why? Love has no boundaries. It doesn't see the wrong. It helps them in their time of need. That's what we call brotherly love. May not ever get it back, but you will be rewarded because it's about what you do, not what they do. And so agape love reaches past what their conduct is and it will reach past and meet their need. So it's not just charity adding to that charity meaning just loving them. But sometimes that love is displayed. See, people think that they have something against each other and they don't like each other. And then now they say, I know I love them because I was able to hug them. That don't mean you love them. That was just an act. Sometimes, sometimes you're trying to prove it to yourself that you love them. And then you don't have to hug nobody to love them. We don't have to become best friends to love them. Because there's some breaches that go so deep that they you would never have that trust level. You don't have to be best friend, but you've got to love them. And you got to have the charity part of love, which goes beyond into the charity nature of helping in their time of need. Uh, it also means to be a kindly uh, in attitude toward people. It means to have compassion, to show goodwill, to be benevolent feeling, especially toward those in need or in disfavor. It means to provide relief or assistance if you could, if possible. So you look at that person like a soul, not like somebody who just hurt you, somebody who you really can't get along with and that was a breach. Hallelujah. That's when you really truly know you've forgiven them and that's when you know you love them when you're able to do these things. So uh, so we talked about hope. We end it now with these scripture is showing how we got the increase in these levels. Don't you want your double portion? Hallelujah. I want mine. And I'm telling you the price, the enemy is running it up, but it's not nothing that we can't meet. We just have to be intentional now about the things of God, walking in his ways. It's not you all. It's not this life. It's not just about us weekly 
going to church, did not shout and dance on, hearing a good message, every now and then uh, 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 saying, uh, uh, witnessing to a soul or doing some good benevolence work and the, the winning the souls and, and witnessing and, and reaching out to them is kind of on the Lord end. We think all is good benevolence. We'll feed people, we'll clothe them, we'll do all of that humanitarian stuff. And we try to equate that to the full thing. That is only part of it. We got to get back down to the real nitty gritty of the thing. And that is to get these things intact so that we can be loving, so that we can help them, so that we can uh, then do all of the benevolent act but that is just not the whole story all by itself. So let us get this double portion of all of these things operating in our life so that we can be great ambassadors and representatives of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so don't you lose your hope. That was the gist of we were finishing up hope, but we just put that piece in there, uh, the, the second piece. But we want you to know that this is your year, the double you can believe God for trust in him, release that hope, have the audacity to hope again, hope for your marriage to be restored, hope for your children and your relationship to be repaired, hope for you and your siblings, uh, broken relationships that you once had and you all fall out, you haven't seen each other in a long time, uh, hope that that would be repaired again. Uh, I have um, loved ones out there that lost, we don't know where they're at. They don't keep in contact with it. they in their own world. No matter how much a lot of us have done to try to help them, they still are not out there. But I still have not lost hope that God can save them. I call them, I call them saved. Even though sometimes I'm like, I don't know, Lord, but I still call them. I have the hope and faith to believe that they are saved. Glory be to God lost loved ones, have hope that they will come back. Glory be to God. And then have that hope set, that goal set, that I'm going to, I'm going to be promoted in this area. I'm not going to stay in this job, being stagnant, not using my skill, gift, and abilities and talents that God's given me, etc. I got hope to believe that I can start this business I can launch my ministry. I can write that book. I can get that record deal. I can go to college. I can go to school and be debt free. I can drive that car. I can live in that type of neighborhood. I can have this type of home. Glory be to God. I can have that type of income. I, matter of fact, I can have multiple streams of income. I can have a thriving business in the middle of crazy economic time. We've got to hope for it. If you don't hope for it and you don't have a promise that's attached to it, it's empty. And remember that hope is a partner to faith. I know that that's blessed somebody. Glory be to God. And I will dare not end this broadcast without making an appeal to somebody who you don't know how to get a hold of this hope. Jesus is your hope. It lies in him. You can't do none of this that I talked about without having him in your life, him giving you the strength and the ability to do this thing. This cannot be done in the old, natural, sinful flesh. This flesh got to be renewed, born again to spiritual things uh, so that the Holy, only the Lord Jesus through you. Remember, a lot of the scriptures ended with in Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus. You can't do it in your own strength. This, uh, this is real stuff. This has to be done by the power of God. And it can't be done in you except you become one of his. You say, how do I do that? And you know that things are happening. You know something in our world is just not right, that, that we are living in some crazy times, times we never experienced before. And you all, this is not to try to get you fearful or anything, but it's just a fact. It's not, it's going to get worse before it get better. The reason I say that, not because Betty, Pastor Betty wanted to say it, because the word said so. In the last days, if you want to read it, go to Matthew, read Matthew 24th chapter through the 27th chapter. It will even tell you exactly where we are and what's going on. And it will get worse before it gets better. We may have spurts where things look like up and up and we have a season. We may have seasons of good, but it's going to get better, get worse. Hallelujah. 
for the world, but for the Christian believer, this is our best time, best opportunity. It is the best time for light to shine in the darkest of hours. It's the best time for us to administer Jesus Christ to people and let them know that he is your hope. He is your bridge over the troubled water. Glory be to God, if you rest in him, he, you, he will never let you be ashamed as we talked about early. Do you want him in your life? Do you want the helper in your life? And he comes through the Holy Spirit after you receive Jesus. Then he sends the Holy Spirit. The Father sends the Holy Spirit in, in the name of Jesus. And he, he don't walk outside of you like Jesus did with his disciple. But the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells and lives and stays in you. Glory be to God. You say, yes, Pastor Betty, how do I do that? Simply by saying this prayer, but you remember we talked about faith and believing. You got to believe it for it to work. So simply say this, dear Lord, here I am. You know me and you know my life. You know how I've lived. Lord Jesus, I admit that I have sinned and that I'm a sinner, but you died for sinners. You said that if whosoever would come unto you, that you would in no wise cast out. I am coming to you now asking you to come into my life, live in my heart, live your life in me and through me. Be the Lord of my life. I believe, Jesus, that you are the son of God, that you died for my sins. But on the third day, you was risen again and you are sitting alive. You came up out of that grave on resurrection day. And now you're back with your father and still praying for us. Thank you for the gift of salvation that you gave to us. Thank you that I am saved by grace. Not nothing of myself that so I can boast, but it is a gift of God given for you. And Lord, I accept your gift today of salvation. Lord, now by my confession, and my uh, of faith and my belief in you, I now know and confess that I am one of yours today, that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And just like that, you're saved. You are one of his. Don't you feel good? Don't you feel that joy? If you don't feel goosebumps and like turning flips, that's okay, because it's not by a feeling. It's not by an emotion. Emotion is by one simple thing, two simple things, a believing and a confessing. And you did that. If you did not open your mouth, say that prayer to me, go back, rewind and say it because confession is verbal. You've got to say it. You're making a declaration to Satan and to the world that I belong to Jesus now. And you confess it with your mouth. That's what the scripture said. And now you believe it in your heart. And guess what you're saying right now? So at any moment that you that your life ends in this earth, you could be 100% guaranteed that you will see Jesus Christ in peace. The recorder, hallelujah, has written your name down in that book that is going to be open, that has the names of everyone who said, Jesus, you are Lord. You see our title, Jesus is Lord, he is Lord. And the only way that we can have eternal life, the only way, that we could get to heaven. The only way we can see the kingdom of God is Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Your spirit man, the real you that is inside these things called bodies, that's the real you that nobody can see. That's the eternal part of you that lives on forever. Even when this, this body, this flesh, which is made of dust, goes back to the dust it was made of. The skeletons go back and it stays where it is. And, but the spirit lives forever. And there's two places to live, heaven or hell. And you made the decision today. And guess what? You have gained, you have gotten the key and got access to heaven and eternal life. Isn't that great news? Now, if you've done so and, and you want uh, 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 to be a part of this church, send us an email in the subject that uh, received Christ or gave my life to the Lord and I want like to become a part of Kingdom Life Christian Center how can I do that we will let you know hallelujah if you don't want to be a member hallelujah that is fine you already connected to the church we're going to send you back there they'll let you know what to do make sure it's a Bible believing church hallelujah Jesus Christ is center focus the word of God is the highest authority and you are all set they'll let you know what to do glory be to God 
And if, but if you're not, and you want to become a part of this church, we would like you to come see if it's a good fit for you. And if you hear this shepherd voice, then we would love, love, love to have a warm seat of welcome awaiting you, a safe environment, hallelujah, and a church where Jesus is the center focus and the word of God is the highest authority, no opinion. And then backslider, come on home, rededicate your life to the Lord. The Lord's arm is outstretched to you. Prodigal, come home. Daddy is waiting. He's looking out and, and he's preparing the feast for you when you come back. Glory be to God. Re <clears throat> repent and turn. Identify what got you back out there so you won't go back out there again. Be tenacious. This more harder. Go for the double, as I said. Get that double anointing, that double uh, uh, that we listed in all these parts so that you can be 100% sure because the devil will come back after you because he said, uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to see have they occupied the house with anything because if this swept and garnished and Jesus ain't back in there and he ain't sitting on the throne, I'm coming right back into trial. And when he come back, he's going to find out that the old you is up, is dead and then buried. Hallelujah. Been resurrected to brand new life and now Jesus is sitting on the throne of your heart. Glory be to God. And if you want to be a member also, we would love to have you. Glory be to God. And to those of you who are just in the interim and you don't have a church home, don't you stay out there wondering. No sheep should be wandering without a shepherd. That's how God said it. And if you want Kingdom Life to be your church, that's fine. We would love to have you. If not, let us in any of those categories, let us be instrumental in helping getting you into a Bible-believing church so that the seed of the word of God that's plenty here, especially to the new believer, will have time to germinate and grow. Your roots will be able to get strong enough in God until you don't need uh, others that you were able to be spiritually mature and then come off the bottle because the Bible says you are a newborn babe. You have the sincere milk of the word, but then later on you got to start eating meat. But until that time, you got to get strong. We want you in the right place that will be conducive to feeding you at the level that you need to be fed. Not all these Twinkies and all this crazy uh, unhealthy formulas. We want you to get sincere milk until you can get the meat of the word of God and so that you can fulfill your purpose, get to your highest call and reach your destiny. I so love you with the love of Jesus. We're going to be putting up our donation screen momentarily of ways that you could donate to the ministry. Also, we're going to be putting up how you can follow us on all our social media platforms. And if you have any questions after that, just send us an email and we will answer your email. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, all minds clear. Okay, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. To all our partners, our well wishers, and to all those of you who keep coming back, men of God and women of God, we love you. Hallelujah. And we are praying. Pray for me. We got some prayer requests that we need some things to do. We 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 got to get busy, uh, especially in this summer month. We can't wait so that we could be a representatives and go out to this world and set these captives free. And if you are ministers. A minister, ministers, anointed and, 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 and been called by God, not appointed by yourself, and you're ministers and you just in interim as well, or you at church, but you know you're looking for a church home, uh, reach out to us. because, Or if you're at a church home and you want to volunteer some time to Kingdom Life Christian Center as we're doing the work of the ministry. We are looking for some ministers to help us in certain areas of the ministry and to the, to the Lord add to the church daily till we have all those people in place. Right now we do not. And so we have some things that we want to, to uh, kind of share this responsibility with some mature called anointed and appointed vessels. And if you are ministers that say, I just be want something to do. Well, we got something for you to do. Reach out to us and we'll let you know how you can connect. Glory be to God. Uh, hallelujah. So we love you all to the, to all of you, to our partners, our supporters. We speak a blessing of God over you. May God overflow you right now in the name of the Lord. May you be well watered for your diligence to this ministry, not just to this ministry, but I have a mandate to cover you and to decree some things over you because you, uh, like Paul said, nobody gave unto us like you did. Hallelujah. In 
giving and receiving but you. And because you're giving, then we are covering you. We are here for you. And we are speaking a blessing over your household right now. We are, uh, I apply the blood of Jesus to your doorpost. So whatever is going on in that home that is not right, it is an end to it. We call it benediction to it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You all be blessed. Have a fantastic rest of the Sunday. And remember when I say relax, relate, and release. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Glory be to God. I am Pastor Betty, senior pastor of this very great church. I am honored and privileged that God anointed and appointed me for such a time as this. Located on the northwest side of Chicago, Illinois. Right now we are virtual. If you have not subscribed to our channel, would you click below and click on the uh, 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 our subscription button and on that notification bell so you will be notified of when we have our broadcast up and then join us every Sunday. Then we live on Twitter and Facebook. Sometimes we are not on Twitter all the time on Thursday for our Bible exploration service. We're in the series talking about the power of the tongue. We're about to culminate that as well. Hallelujah. And then we're going to be putting up what we're going to be talking about uh, after this series. It is good. You do not want to miss this. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. And we love you. Have a fantastic week. Look forward to Monday on tomorrow. Hallelujah. Look for opportunities for you to, uh, um, uh, to, to make Jesus name magnify and glorify and opportunities that God is preparing for you. Keep your ears open to hear the voice of the good shepherd and only hear his voice. You all be blessed now. I'm teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. Be blessed people of God. Love you so much. In Jesus' name.